Um, I think everyone is aware um, we are setting, I think, records no one thought we would actually set. We're setting new daily case records with almost 500,000 new cases per day, um, and the deaths have increased again, where we are seeing days with over 2,000 deaths um, in a single day. Um, here in New York, we're actually we're we're doing um, we're doing our part. Unfortunately, um, we're approaching seventy thousand cases per day. Um, we're already three times um, the highest number we ever saw before. We only hit twenty k once last January of twenty twenty one. So we're already more than three times above that. Um, we saw one hundred and seventy five deaths in a single day from COVID on December twenty ninth. One hundred and seventy five in a single day just right here in New York State. Um, and just for perspective, our last winter um, seven day moving average peaked at 205 on January 15th. So we're already, even though vaccines are available, here we are, we're actually headed uh, really in a, in a negative direction. Vincent, do you have any thoughts? Well, uh, people are always saying to me, it must be the variant. And I say, no, people are back to their lives more than ever in, in the last year. Plus, there are a lot of unvaccinated people. Plus, the vaccines don't prevent infection. They prevent disease. So that's why we're in this situation. But if more people would be vaccinated, there would be fewer hospitalizations, don't you think? I, I think vaccination is, is the most important thing here. Um, via a press release, the CDC announced on Monday, December 27th, given what we currently know about COVID-19 and the Omicron variant, CDC is shortening the recommended time for isolation from 10 days for people with COVID-19 to five days if asymptomatic, I want to stress that, if asymptomatic, followed by five days of wearing a mask when around others. People who test positive should isolate for five days. And if asymptomatic at that time, right? So we reach day six. If you're feeling better, if you have no symptoms, then they may leave isolation if they continue to mask for five days to minimize the risk of infecting others. Um, and in this CDC press release, the CDC goes on to explain that the change is motivated by science, demonstrating that the Majority, I'm going to throw in, but not all, the majority of SARS-CoV-2 transmission occurs early in the course of illness, generally in the one to two days prior to onset of symptoms and the two to three days afterwards. The strategy of um, Tetris, of COVID-0, um, that's no longer what we're doing here. We are coming up with something that we hope from a public health standpoint is reasonable. Um, yes, day six, you do not go visit your 90-year-old um, mother with um, numerous health issues because you may still be infectious. Um, but there's a balance here. When you have half a million people getting infected every day, um, we like to think, you know, healthcare workers were essential. Um, but then other people, you know, say, that's, that's great, Dr. Griffin. How are you going to get to and from work? Who's going who's gonna to run the trains? Um, how are you going to eat? Who's going to run the supermarkets and grow the crops? Um, who's going to police the streets? Who's going to come if there's a fire? Um, you know, the, a lot of people are essential. So I think this is this is a balance, but I think it's really important to realize that at day six, you're not magically not contagious. As we have said for a year now, it's never there's never a, a, an abrupt dividing line between one phase and another. And because people are genetically varied, it it it's different. And, you know, it's hard to put a number on it. If you wanted to be absolutely certain, we'd be still at 14 days, right? <laughs> I think that's, yeah, we would still be at 14 days. We would even, as some countries have done, we might even be testing at the end. We might even be um, you know, doing PCR, which is, I'll say, overly sensitive. Um, a lot of people criticized um, wanting there to be a test at the end of this. Some employers that we work with have still said, okay, I see what you're doing here, um, but I don't want those workers coming back into a workplace where there's vulnerable people until they've got a couple negative tests. So um, there is going to be a lot of nuance here. It's going to be a lot of subtlety. And, and I think people have to be smart. You are not magically non-infectious at day six. That is not what the CDC is saying here in their guidance. For people who are unvaccinated or are more than six months out from their second mRNA dose or more than two months after the J&J &J vaccine and not yet boosted, right? So they're lumping the unvaccinated with those that have gone out with the stretch. We're talking about now people that are not necessarily infected. They've been exposed. So isolation for the infected, quarantine for the exposed. The CDC now recommends quarantine for five days, 
followed by strict mask use for an additional five days. So this period of 10 days when you may turn positive, you may start becoming contagious. Um, but then they even water it down. Alternatively, if a five-day quarantine is not feasible, it is imperative that an exposed person wear a well-fitting mask at all times when around others for 10 days after exposure. Now, individuals who have received their booster shot, they do not need to physically quarantine following an exposure, but should wear a mask for 10 days after the exposure. because this concern that even vaccinated people can get infected, can spread. Um, and then they do say, Best practice would also include a test for SARS-CoV-2 at five days after exposure. Um, if symptoms occur, then individuals should immediately, um, they say quarantine until a negative test confirms symptoms are not attributable to COVID-19. Daniel, what if everybody's triple vaccinated and some people are testing positive, whether or not they have symptoms? Why do you have to quarantine them? They're all triple vaccinated. So let's say they're all young and healthy, not very old, not very young people. Why do we have to take them out of the workforce at all? You know, we'll look back on this and we'll wonder why it took us, you know, so long to get to different points. Um, you yeah. know, we don't quarantine after an exposure to flu. We don't we yes. don't protect the those who decide not to get vaccinated for influenza. Um, you know, at some point we are going to and we are moving. This was a pretty rapid move in this direction to say, you know, you've had your choice. You can make your decision. Do you want to get vaccinated? If you've decided not to get vaccinated, um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure we will continue to make all these Herculean um, steps to protect the unvaccinated because that's what we're seeing. That's who's dying. Yes. That's who's filling the hospitals. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So I, I do think that we are at the point now where we have multiple highly effective vaccines, amazingly effective, right in the 90s against yeah. hospitalization and death. It's about time to stop thinking about those people who are never going to be vaccinated. It's their choice and they, they've made a choice. And so I don't see why we have to stay home from work to protect them. I mean, it may yeah. seem sound cruel, but I think we will eventually get there. Don't you, Daniel? Um, I think we'll get there. What What are the last few steps? Um, the last few steps may be moving those vaccines down to the youngest among us so that they mm -hmm. can feel, yeah. you know, I have a neighbor across the street, Al, um, super nice guy. Um, and he has um, very young children and he is just continuing to be really careful, really trying to keep sure. those kids safe. And, you know, I think that that will sort of start to complete this this move. Um, and, you know, and as we know, we also have those among us who do not have immune systems that allow them to get sure. that full protection. Um, so we do need to ramp up, get these people the pre-exposure monoclonals. Nice to have some medicines for those individuals as well. So but I, I think we're moving in that direction.